Hi everyone, I'm Max and this is a video from my AWS series. Now after creating an account and hosting our first web application, in this video I'll have a look at how we can secure our account. Because we want to make sure that no one else is using our account with our services and therefore makes us pay. Let's have a look at how this works and how AWS handles account level security in this video. I'm in my brand new account and to control the security of that account, we can visit IAM. That's a service which you can enter into the service search bar and it stands for Identity and Access Management. So we have a whole service dedicated to keeping our account secure. Now that is of course important because your account is very valuable. You added your credit card and there are a lot of services which can get expensive if you use them wrong or even worse, if some wrong wrong uses them. So how does AWS handle a security? And important, with that I'm not talking about application security. You as a system administrator or developer are responsible for making your apps and your systems secure. AWS helps you with that. For example, it automatically protects you against basic DDoS attacks. But beyond that, that's your task. Here we're talking about giving the right permissions to the right people or services. And these are two important things. One, yes, people. More than one person can use the account. You are the account holder, but of course if you're an organization, you might have multiple developers and other people who should use this account. Since we have analytics services, services for spinning up virtual machines, services for file storage, there might be different teams in your company which use these services. So you can give access to different users. If you visit this page here on identity and access management, it probably looks like this if this is a new account. Your security status doesn't look that good because there are a couple of things you can improve. Before we'll turn towards that, let's understand how this access and permission thing generally works. We get groups, we get users, roles and policies. You can see that on the left here. Now I said you can add multiple users and you can put these users into groups. You can for example create an admin group with full admin rights and then you could create one which is only allowed to access as free and store files there. You can even be more granular than that and only allow a certain group to access a certain bucket, like a folder you could say, in S3 to add and change files there or only give it read-only access. You can be very granular. Let's create a new group here. So let's click on groups, click create new group and then let's give it a name and I'm going to create an admin group, so a group with full admin rights. Let's do that. And let's search for, or actually it's the first one, let's pick admin access here. So with that, let's now click create group and we have a new group. Now you might ask, why would I create a group with admin rights if I am already the admin? Well, for one, if you want to give more people admin rights and secondly, the people here won't have exactly the same rights as the root user. There are some things, for example, related to billing, which you still can't access with these admin rights here. Now that's nice and a good practice which we also are informed about on the dashboard is that we create users and don't, and that's important, don't use our root account except for maybe accessing our billing information or stuff like that. But we shouldn't really use it for our day-to-day -day business. Instead we should create a user for ourselves. And we can do this here under users and then click add user obviously. Now here give it a name and this can be any name you like. I'll choose. Maximilian Dodge Schwarzmuller, that's just my name, but you can use any username you like. You can also add more users in one step. Now here the access type is important. We can choose between programmatic access and AWS Management Console access. What's the difference? Well, we are in the console and we really just want to decide here, is this a user who is mainly or only interacting with AWS through that console? then this checkbox here is all we need. But maybe you also want to interact with the AWS services from the command line interface, for example, a tool you can download. That's especially important for developers. You can then write some commands to, for example, push new code onto AWS or anything like that. Then you want to check this too, and this will then give you a key value pair you can use for these operations. 
that's advanced. I won't cover it in this video, but with these keys, you'll be able to do or to programmatically access your services. Next, you can choose a password or let AWS generate one. You can require a password reset by that user and then let's click next. Now here we have to define which permissions we want to give to the user. The best practice is to simply add the user to a group because we already defined permissions on group level, but we could also attach policies directly to that user. So we could make this user an admin or whatever. I'll just choose the group here though, and then simply click next. So this is all looking good to me. And now I can click create user. And now with that, this is the overview page. And here you can view your password, the password which was generated for you. And you can even send an email to yourselves with the login instructions. That might be interesting. It's this link which you now have to use in the future to log in into your account. And then you will need that username you just created and that password. So with that, I will close that and not log in with that user for now. And let's go back to the dashboard before we have a look at roles and policies. So we see our security status improved. Now what we can do is we can activate multi-factor authentication. And I strongly recommend doing that if you plan on using that account. Nothing is stronger than having a second step here during authentication so that even if your password gets stolen, you have that fallback that the person who stole the password still can't access the account. Now, this is something you can then also activate and you should activate for the individual users. So as soon as you do log in with that newly created user, go to that page and enable MFA for that user too. And you should apply an IAM password policy so that users who are now resetting their password are required, for example, to have an uppercase character, lowercase number, make it a complex password, potentially let it expire and so on. With this set, the only thing missing is MFA. I'm going to do this after the recording. And we made our account much more secure, especially once we start using that user we just created. Now, what about roles and policies then? Well, we had a look at policies. We assigned a policy to the group, this administrator access policy here. We can have a look at policies to see all the already existing ones. And we can also create our own policy. Policies simply define sets of rules. And if we have a look at a policy, we can even load it. It's written here in JSON. This is how a policy looks like. You basically define the version of the policy language here. And then you have statements, in this case only one, where you have an effect that you want to allow something, then what, here everything, on what, on everything. A more detailed or more specific policy would, for example, be one where we search for elastic beanstalk. Here, if we have a look at the elastic beanstalk full service policy, we see now we have a couple of actions which are allowed, for example, here on EC2 to do anything on EC2, and then on all resources, so that we can start all possible EC2 instances in this case, for example. So this is how such policies look. You can create them on your own and you use them to manage access. Now, what are roles then? Because we have users and we have groups and we have policies which we can assign to groups or users or implicitly to users through groups. But what are roles? By default, in your AWS account, no service has any permissions to access other services. And you might wonder, why would a service access other services? What about Beanstalk? We use Beanstalk, but in the end, Beanstalk is just a simplification. Behind the scenes, it started an EC2 instance, so a virtual machine. And it did so because it had the permissions to do so. We gave it that permission implicitly when we started using it through the console. By default though, no service has any permissions to access other services. And if you have, for example, code on your EC2 instance, which wants to reach out to S3 to store files there, you need to give EC2 the role to do so. And that is the last step. Roles can be attached to services. 
so that your services can have certain roles which allow them to interact with other services. Some of them, as with Elastic Beanstalk, are assigned dynamically when you do use them, automatically, but others have to be assigned, and especially they have to be assigned if all of that happens programmatically. If you write code which accesses another service from within another one, then roles come into play. And that is how IAM works, how security on account level works. You give permissions and you define who is able to do what. And the best practice is to be as granular and strict as possible. Don't give more permissions than a user or a role needs. That is a good practice. Now, some of the things like roles here are a bit advanced. You don't really need them if you're just starting off, but it never hurts to you know right away how that works and how you do use it if you get more serious and if your application grows. Now, we probably will see one or the other throughout this series when we start working with AWS, but even if we don't, keep it in mind and one thing you should definitely do is secure your account. Make it secure, add multi-factor authentication, use users, don't risk losing it or inviting other people to access it. That could be costly. So, see you in the next videos. Bye.